Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, my name is Haley, and I make content all about life with a chronic illness. And today's video is part of Vlogmas, but today's video is going to be a little different. As you can tell by the title, it's what I wish I had known slash done before getting into my failed to service prospect. Um, there are a lot of things I wish I had known, a lot of things I wish I had done before getting him, and I don't regret it for a second. I love him with all my heart, and he is such a family dog now. Everyone loves him, um, but he definitely isn't service dog material, which is totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, but I definitely want to share tips and tricks whether you are planning on rescuing a dog to become a service dog, which is what I originally intended to do, or whether you are planning to get a puppy from a breeder. I think these tips, I don't know with why I said tips and tricks earlier, but these tips um, will probably really apply to all of you, almost all of you watching this, if you are looking into getting a service dog. So let's get into the video. So, I guess I should give a little history and context. So, I have a lot of health issues and mobility issues, and I'm not going to get into what tasks would help me with my disabilities and my health issues. Um, that will be a whole nother video sometime in the future, the same with why I went this route instead of going through a service dog program. I will talk about that in a separate video as well, but um, yeah. So I wanted a service dog because I knew it would really, really help me with independence and with my disabilities. Um, so yeah, and in September 2019, I decided along with my parents to start looking for a dog to rescue. The reason why I wanted to rescue a dog was because I fully believe in rescuing when you can. Um, also, the thought of a puppy really, really scared my parents and me and my whole family, and that wasn't something we originally wanted to do. Um, so that's kind of why we went through the rescue route. And um, so I was looking at pet finder, animal shelters, rescues. Um, so I want to say in October, I found this one dog on pet finder. I was looking. Um, for mainly labs, um, poodles, although poodles were really hard to find in any rescue or animal shelter that were the size I needed. I wanted one about the size of a lab or bigger, like a smaller lab, um, just for reference. Um, and I couldn't find one. All of the poodles were small and I knew small dogs wasn't what I was looking for. I was looking for medium to large. So those were like the breeds I have heard the most success about them becoming service dogs and actually prior and like sometime in September I think we went to an animal shelter and looked at a lab. lab. He was very beautiful but um, he bit my mom and he was absolutely crazy and the animal shelter story kept changing. It was never consistent. It was weird. So anyways, in October 2019. I saw this one dog on Pet Finder, so I went to the rescue website where it was at. I applied and then I inquired about that specific dog and then I was let know that that dog was actually planning to get adopted by one family and there's multiple families interested in that dog. Um, and I have mentioned that I was still looking for a service dog prospect and the owner of the rescue suggested this other dog, which if I can Put the picture of Indy, the very first picture I got, I'll show it here. And he was so cute. I fell in love with him and he was so cute. And we originally were told he was a German Shepherd mix of some kind. Honestly, now we're thinking he's a lab and dingo mix. I'm not kidding. Because if you search that, it looks exactly like him. It's crazy. Anyways. So, yeah. So that's kind of the history and context. My plan in the beginning was to um, really focus on the first six months of basic obedience and then go into task training. But that was kind of a very loose plan. And I knew I wanted a trainer to help me, especially with basic obedience. Because Indy, in the beginning, he knew how to sit, he knew down but he didn't know how to heal, he didn't know how 
there's a lot of things he didn't know. So we got him and enrolled him in basic obedience classes. And this is the first tip I really wish I had done. Um, what I wish I had done is have him temperament tested before getting him. And that goes for any dog I was going to look into. Temperament test is basically when a dog trainer, I would suggest a dog trainer with service dog experience and also and or um, a behaviorist because they will be able to really tell. I thought a simple Google search of how to assess if a dog is good enough to be a service dog. No, I'm really, really embarrassed I did that and thought that I could tell because I will tell you in a couple of minutes what we learned about Indy, um, which is part of him. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's definitely not service dog qualities you want in a dog. So another thing I wish I had done before getting him was lined up a trainer, but not only line up a really good trainer, but beforehand interviewed a few different trainers in my local area to get their philosophy on training dogs because I learned very quickly, I didn't know this, but dog trainers can have very different approaches to training a dog and the trainer I went with, which was recommended by someone, and he said he had service dog experience. The way he trained dogs <laughs> was not ethical in my opinion, it was not good to the dog mentally, and um, he was completely rude and dismissive to both me and my mom when we would bring up genuine questions um, and concerns about some of his behaviors and how to correct it. Um, we basically got told repeatedly, you're a bad dog parent. If he's having those issues, it's because of you and you need to fix it, but he would never tell us how to fix it. So we enrolled him in basic obedience, but honestly it was so chaotic because there was like 20 other dogs and it was just so much. And it was kind of in this time we kind of learned that he very easily shut down in loud places with a lot going on. And that's not something that's something a service dog should not do, is to shut down in place in environments like that. Also, we started noticing some anxious behaviors that were confirmed by his vet. Um, and then we're also confirmed by your now dog trainer, which I'll get into. I guess I should mention we now have a great dog trainer who is awesome. He is going to help me with my next service dog and he has helped us tremendously with Indy. The way he trains dogs is very, very ethical and very good to them. And yeah, I really, really, really like him and I'm so appreciative I have him. Um, in my arsenal. So I want to say this period, like when he graduated basic obedience class, it was probably like the beginning of 2020. Gosh, I don't remember. So much has happened this year. It's either the end of 2019 or beginning of 2020. I can't remember. Um, but we basically, he kind of completed it, but it just, it wasn't solid. And so we found our now dog trainer and he has helped us, like I said, so much with Indy. So, um, and these definitely become, come a, lot, a long way, but because he had so many anxious behaviors and because he shuts down so easily, it's not in the cards for him to be a service dog and that's perfectly okay. And I ended up coming to that conclusion naturally on my own, as did my, the rest of my family and then our dog trainer kind of voiced that as well, that he he doesn't appear to be the greatest candidate for service dog work. So yeah. So that's kind of like the whole story with Indy and some tips and things I wish I would have done slash known. And I'll just recap, and there's also an additional thing, but I'll recap for you guys. So t get them temperament tested before you even see them or meet them because I'm telling you it is so easy to fall in love with a dog and it is so, so easy to fall in love with a dog who is not fit for service dog work and you want to bring them home and then you're devastated because they're not fit to be a service dog. So I would say before you even meet them, have someone go out there first, like I said, a trainer who has service dog experience or a behaviorist so they can fully evaluate, temperament, test the dog, and see where the dog's strengths and weaknesses are, 
Um, sometimes those weaknesses can be corrected with training, but other times those weaknesses, like induced weaknesses, can't and that's perfectly fine. It's just not meant to be in the cards. So I say that for whether you're getting a puppy or whether you're getting a rescue, do that. Also, interview several different trainers. Have one lined up before you even bring the dog home. That is something I fully regret doing. Um, but yes, interview them. Research their philosophies online, honestly, because oftentimes they will tell you their philosophy, but you don't always know what that means until you're actually in the training sessions. And then you're like, oh, I want to leave. I don't like this. So I suggest that as well. Also, um, have a solid plan for training. So whether it's six months of basic obedience and then you're moving to task training, or you're just going to go with the flow of the dog and try to get those fundamental basics down and not put a timeline on it. Um, definitely have a solid plan, type it out or write it out, and definitely have all the basic obedience tasks you want them to have down when you're training them. Also, there is something that's really, really big, is that for any dog, this goes for pet dogs too, there's something called three days, three weeks, three months. And that's basically when they start to settle in. So after three days, they're settling in, their personality's coming out. After three weeks, basically their whole personality, personality is out. You know what their behaviors are like. You know what you may need to correct with training or what is great with them. And also, yeah, three days, three weeks, three months, yeah. And three months is basically the same if nothing, if their full personality still isn't on display or all of their bad behaviors are on display or even good behaviors, it will be most likely by three months. And that was told by a few different trainers, a bunch of sources online, and then by the vet. So, yes. Also, definitely have a vet lined up beforehand as well. Luckily, that is one thing I did do. So I'm really glad I did that. But with all that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. We still have Indy, he is still the light of my life. I still love him so much, but he is just not gonna be my service dog and that's perfectly okay. And um, I'm not gonna go through the route of getting a service, getting a rescue dog and turning it into a service dog. I know there have been many success stories, but I want you to keep in mind that Sometimes, actually a lot of times with rescue dogs, you don't know their history, you don't know their past, you don't know their triggers because there are some triggers for Indy, surprisingly, some objects that he's terrified of um, that possibly he could have had negative interactions with whatever his past life was. Also, um, you might not know if they are genetically predisposed to any conditions. So that's another thing to keep in your mind as well. I'm not discouraging you from getting a rescue dog. I just want to let you know all the risks is that they do have a higher chance of not succeeding, but it is possible. Just definitely do your research and follow all the tips and even more um, that I talked about. And yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like it so more people will see it. Subscribe down below and I will see you in my next video guys. Bye.